Oh, wow. That's a Sports Center top 10 right there. Good <laughs> hands. Build me up, break me down. Never come around. You say I left. Wasn't right. We'll just make it around. Speed it up. Slow it down. So we're heading to Howell Ice Arena right now. Our friend Peter is going to drive us here to New Jersey. We're here to see George Bozak. He's a fellow goalie coaching friend of mine, and I'm a big fan of his work and what he does. So we're going to go check out and uh, see how he does things and get a little inside scoop on on how he likes to coach goalies. And I like to take experiences like this and learn from other goalie coaches. And I'm happy I get to work with him a little bit and see what his philosophy is. I think that's a, a big way to learn is to go out and, and experience how other guys coach. So we're going to go check it out. Okay, gentlemen, first of all, we got a special guest today. Kept this one secret. Coach Rick Ice, what do you have to be square with? Stick blade and what else? And what else? Do you, are you square with the short side post or middle of your net? Got to come from the middle of your net. This is to get you in the habit when the play comes on the wing, what we're working on is our habit when we initially angle out and also when the play filters to the middle. You're here, swivel. Swivel from the middle of your net. Don't touch the post and fade out. Swivel from middle of your net, C cut out, get set. Then play goes to the middle, slightly filter out. Now just get in the habit of presenting our body, snap through, eyes, hands, hips. Snap, find the puck, shuffle back, square back up. Swivel, left C cut, set, shuffle out, hard C cut, shuffle back, understand? Let's go. I have goalies sometimes that have trouble with that when uh, they come out for an angle for a shot and they're, they're just, that inside foot is still slightly off angle so they'll get beat on that far side because they, they don't have that inside foot totally square to the center of the net. Just like you're telling them when they go out for this first push to make that slight adjustment before they come out. Yeah. I like that. It's that and that's just something from watching guys. Like it's, yeah. we all love to say, oh, I, how do we all learn? Yeah. Talking to other coaches, but honestly, it's just, it's life. It's things you'll notice. Like, yeah. I'll go to NHL games and you watch how the goaltenders come out. Yeah. Snap it. It's just, right. they're always so square. Like, mm -hmm. they know how little you know, yeah. the net is. Definitely. You're going to angle up, puck and stick bleed. He's going to take one step to the middle, so slight fade out. Now he's going to shoot either side low. So this way, you have to get a read off the stick blade. Remember, see it from point of release to point of contact, to point of destination. You should be able to tell me what part of glass it hit. Good. Nicely done. Got to keep you honest. I got to have a little fun here too. Good job. Too bad my shot's too predictable. Hey, Rick, you know what? Enough of me talking, because I don't know. I, well, I was just going to say, I'm, I'm glad that you guys had right-handed and left-handed shooter. This is something I talk to my goalies about all the time, is noticing the, the hand of the player, like George said. It's a big difference if a player is driving the lane and he's a right-handed guy on his backhand, or he's a left-handed guy here, right? That's a, that's a big gap in the difference of where he's going to be driving the net and having him drive in different lanes. In a game, you're never going to get the same thing every single time, but noticing right off the bat, as soon as you guys get set with that puck, noticing what hand that guy is is a huge factor, and it kind of tells you what the shooter's going to do. driving with that hand, like you say, and don't open up that arm. Because once that arm opens, that's where those squeaky ones get in, especially on tip shots. So the more we can take that hand and drive it towards the puck, like he's saying, while keeping our arms, we can still have hands out and still keep our arms. Exactly, if we're just throwing our hand out to throw our hand out, you might think you're doing good, but you're opening yourself up, especially in tight like that. Wow, that's a Sports Center top 10 right there. Good <laughs> hands. Good. 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 
That was a muffin and a half. Hey, one, one thing there though, I, I will say, hey, so when you see this guy driving, I know you gotta respect the shot, but don't start backing up too early, right? So if he's got a better shot there and he fires that shot short side, you are already, before you even release that puck, you started creeping your way back, anticipating a pass, right? Trust your edges that you can get that push across. You're quick enough to get there. If you start backing up too quickly, it takes a better shot short side he'll score that puck next time. You know what I'm saying? Do you want to take the reins on the yeah. next one before I do one? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Did that, make, did that make sense on that one there? Oh, absolutely. Well, because yeah. you know, out of the corner of my eye, it's like, I want to do the drill. Right. And I saw it, you saw I'm like, man, I'm seeing yeah. that open up. Yeah, it was like that last second you started to, to almost like change your square. And it's like you got here. And then right before you started to release that puck, you made the save like this here. That's what happened when Patrick Kane yeah. with um, Michael Layton. Yeah, yeah. He had his head up the whole time, right. but as soon as he saw Leighton turn like that, that's when he fired that puck because right. he knew he was off balance. Uh -huh. But you know what we're talking about? Remember we're talking about that? I know I was talking about with you. The genius that's Pat Kane. Think about this at the NHL level. Yeah. Pat Kane this year, I think I've seen him four or five times. Now think about it. A left-handed shot from outside the dot, NHL level. You don't think he's going to hit far post. Right. But what Pat Kane does is an absolute genius because his release is so lethal. Mm -hmm. He'll skate up the ice. He has his hands out in front. He pulls the puck here. He sees the goalie start to shift. And as soon as he shifts, yep. and so it's here and then it's right off. Yeah. How much does the puck actually move if it goes from here to here? Not at all. Not much. It's the perception if, of it, though. And even if he goes short side, you're balanced enough. The yeah. little bit that you're giving away, I'd hold my ground. So you guys have to determine at what point... Do I want to start making my way, sorry, excuse me real quick. At what point do I want to start making my way into this post to get in? Or if I'm going to hold my ground here with knowing that that guy's sitting right out there. Go. Go. Okay, now, you had a great read there. You were aware and you projected. Did you hesitate though? Trust your read, just go, because notice what you did, you got the look and you're like, eh. Drive out, put him under pressure. When you hesitate, that creates time and space for him. Make him make the play. I have some guys that do the same thing where they'll go to make a save. Perfect. But then they'll go down and they're not. I, I like to use that analogy too of on top of pucks. Yep. But so, we got some guys where they'll go down and they'll think they're on top of it, but they just, go! just reach out with the arm and extend instead of getting. I like to use like my shoulders, right? When, I, when, a, rush is, when a rush is coming, I, like, I used to like to get the yep, feeling yep. of being on top. Yep. So when I'm making a save and I'm shifting into it, I'm getting on top of the puck instead of just reaching a hand like that. Go! Well, now with the example we give, guys, watch this one. This one you keep, you use, keep your eyes on mine. Yeah. You can see my fingers wave, right? Yeah. Read my bracelet. Huh. Can't yeah. do it. Right. And that's detail. Think about it. Yeah, How yeah. many times have you seen your guys where, go! What you're talking about. Yeah. They're here, and they think they have it, and the puck either goes underneath their block or right above mm -hmm. their pad. Right. Another example you can give them, think about, if I take a tennis ball, mm -hmm. It's all right. And I throw it at a, a brick wall. It's yeah. going to hit, come right back to me. Right. Because it's flat. Mm -hmm. But now, if I'm up over the puck, the puck's always going to come from ice level up. So this way, if I'm up over it, I get a true read of the release, and it's much easier for me to shift my oh, body weight into it. That's a good example. This player drives, he can pass back. So he comes off, comes back here, but if he passes back across, you're still in that position to shift back. And if he continues through, you've cut your distance in half so you can still come around. He battles, you can't teach that. It's like, we just call it Timmy Thomas. Yeah. He has that Timmy Thomas. And what we want to make that is an unconscious behavior. It's so easy to get caught up in a drill and get myself in position. Yeah. Well, the best way in the world to get yourself up in position, just make it what it is. Yeah. Where's the puck? Go to it. Yeah. Where's the stick blade? Go to it. Understand? Yep. It's like, you know, hey, when you get older, you're 21, you're in the bar. There's the pretty girl. You're gonna walk right over to her, it's simple. Go! Go! 
Had a boy. Good. All right, come here real quick. Right-handed shot from this side. What's naturally the easiest thing from the hip? Short side. Yeah, short side. Why? Let's 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 be educated here. Mathematics. Shortest distance between two points, straight line. It's the same reason. If I'm screened up on the right wing point and it's a right-handed shot, I'm gonna stay square, but I'm gonna shift here because one, the short side's the easiest shot to hit, and plus if he fires across the body. It gives me an ample window to see where the puck's going, right? Coach, anything? No, I totally agree. If you're just going to go out and put, throw your hands down and block, it's fine when they're a foot away from you in the crease. But if they're going to take that shot and you instantly drop, you're just giving them all the room. Even if they don't see it right away, they're going to start to realize that your hands are going to start dropping as you make that descent. And now you're giving that puck that much more room just to get by you and to get up high short side or far side. So like he's saying, if you use those hands, they don't got to be out like this but it's just something to give the, the forward, frustrate them a little bit, so they're not gonna be picking corners like that. Imagine that. Woo! It's like I know what I'm talking about. Exactly, if I grab this puck here and I stop it, what are the two directions I can really go? Left or right, but if I move up and I get square and I look up ice, now I have options. I can take the puck here, I can go here, I can make an outlet pass, I have more options. Good. Good. Nice job. Two more. You get a righty and you can read that he's either gonna shoot or attack and you can tell by the angle that he has. Is an RBH a good selection or is a VH a good selection? VH, just watch, if you're in a VH, you got your hands up over the puck, you've got it sealed, but now if he cuts to the front, it's very easy for you to project out and over the puck. Understand whereas if you're in an RVH, what do you lose, what do you lose right away? Any use of your hands, any use of your hands. And if you're in an RVH, it's harder getting that poke check activated. There we go. Atta boy, wait out, wait him. Hey, thanks for having me out today, guys. Very nice to meet you all. Okay, gentlemen, you guys get together. I'll get a picture of you guys with Coach. Yeah, let's do it. Only time somebody ever wants my mug <laughs> in a picture. Jin Don, gentlemen. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. Slancha, Jin Don. Jin Don's 100 years health and happiness in Italian. <laughs> I remember the first like pro camp I went to. Mm -hmm. I thought the guys didn't like me because I'm doing split saves, I'm going all over the place. Yeah. And the guy who was under contract, the guy Corey Cadden, I'll never forget him. Mm -hmm. Big goalie, fantastic goalie. He was shifting, pucks are hitting him, he's controlling everything. I'm like, oh, everybody's making him look good, they're aiming at him. No. Right. What I tell them is, there are certain non-negotiables. Yeah. How you play the game, play to your strengths. Yeah. I said, have fun, but I was like, one, learn to read the game. Don't get caught up with, if I'm giving you a mechanical adjustment, yeah. take it, but then realize in a game, I don't want you worrying about the mechanical side of it. That's your starting point. Yeah. I want you reading the game, but controlling the game. Yeah. And there's more, like everybody, when I say controlling the game, everybody thinks I'm talking, put the rebounds where they belong. No, there's more than that. Yeah. There's controlling the game is forcing that player into a situation you want. Like a two on one, if I've got a player coming down the right wing side, so it's my left side, right. that's a right handed shot. Mm -hmm. I want that shot all day. So I'm right. telling my dude, take that passing lane. Mm -hmm. Now you force that forward. Hey, he's either gonna shoot, cut to the middle. Yeah. Now you're cutting your back in. Mm -hmm. Identifying the game. Communication. Mm -hmm. like, the biggest mistakes we made as goalies. Yeah. We always wanted shots of practice. We wouldn't pay attention to it. Know your team's D zone. Yeah. This way, pucks in the corner, you're looking up ice, but if you see your teammate out of position, especially for the midget junior guys and Lord will and you work with a pro, right. your guys will love you when you help them out. Hey, stop looking at the puck. Right. Look up ice. Mm -hmm. 
that's controlling the game. Yeah. Being the quarterback, it's like Peyton Manning, putting right. the guys where they belong. Oh, yeah. That's where the goaltender is in hockey. Yeah. So it's play to your strengths, control the game, but then ultimately learn to read the game. Yeah. Like you brought up today, know what hand a player is. Yeah. You saw one of the students today, he was just angling to the middle. Right. Yeah, the guy was standing in the middle, but he was a left-handed shot, and he yeah. wasn't challenging him. Mm -hmm. Wasn't going so well. Yeah. He told me, learning a butterfly is not hard. Yeah. Taking on a slap shot, you have reflexes. There's only Humans are only so fast. He said, the hardest skill you're ever going to pick up as a goalie, knowing when to move, how much to move, but getting your feet set before the shot. Yeah. Look in the NHL. The only time you see what you call the rare bad goal yeah. it's when their feet aren't set. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, because even them, they're the best in the world, right. but the shooters keep getting better. Yeah. It's a, the ultimate chess match. Right. We get better at this, and then they're like, all right, well, then now I'm going to throw this at you. Right. It's constant. Yeah. We were talking about fluidity. Yeah, so. absolutely. No, I, I totally agree, and that's why I was so excited to be able to come out and coach with you today because I, I we talked a little bit about this on the ice, but I just I love the fact that we can collaborate with other goalie coaches and hear different ideas and hear guys like you on how you think. And I'm a big believer in going in and learning from all these guys because that's how you get better. And it's the same with coaching as it is with goaltenders. And we encourage our guys to go try new coaches and to go learn new things because you're not going to always have the same goalie coach at every single level. So to be able to learn from other people and to be able to take criticism and to be able to learn something else from somebody else, uh, I think it's a great thing. And that's why I was so excited to be able to come out in the ice for you today. I really appreciate you letting me coming out. It was awesome. Uh, no, I know. Really you kidding me? I appreciate it. Well, the, the best thing that happened today, and I saw, you know how sometimes you can look at a kid and you see the light bulb go yeah. off. We sometimes remember, because especially when you're doing group training, right? unfortunately, you're under the constraints of time. You yeah. have an hour, and you want you want value for your product, so you want right. to get them in, get them repetitions. But like even the way that you're hearing me speak, mm -hmm. we might sit down to our coach. Yeah, I might have to say it another way. Mm -hmm. Well, something I was trying to explain during one of the drills, I believe I don't know if it was CJ, may have been Andrew. Mm -hmm. You said the same principle, but you said it a different way, and yeah. I saw a light bulb go off. Mm -hmm. That's it right there, and I'm like, yeah. ah, yeah. You know, it's an aha moment for me, but it's also an aha moment for right. him. So no, exactly, and that's how the kids get better. And I think that's it's a beautiful thing when you can collaborate with people and help these kids develop in any way you can, and whether that's coming on the ice together or just being able to sit down and have a conversation like this in front of people on YouTube, right? Yes. And to, and to show that we can collaborate with other people and learn different ideas, it, it, it's awesome. So once again. Thank you, George, for having me come out. I really appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much for, for being a part of this. And we'll be uh, we'll be checking in with George here soon. If you want to follow him, you can go to the my info on this episode. You can follow all his social media stuff. George, thank you so much again. Thank you. I really Rick. appreciate you having me come out today. Likewise. Build me up, break me down, never come around. You say I left, wasn't right.